Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and there are some new easy to miss details and footage for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania that we gotta talk about. From an IMAX version of last week's trailer, and God bless those IMAX folks for releasing footage not only in a taller aspect ratio, but actually in 4K so that we can make out more details. But also a recent new home promo showing Kang in his precious time chair that Kevin Feige confirmed is what he's trying to fix to escape the quantum realm in this movie. I'm gonna break down all the new details that we've learned, but also be sure to watch MT's excellent breakdown of the trailer from last week if you haven't already i loved all of his takes on everything quantum mania of course premieres on february 17th which is also the launch date of our new channel the deep dive in which i'm gonna be doing live breakdowns and investigations with a more pointed focus and you betcha i got something planned for quantum mania so be sure to subscribe so before we get into the imax 4k details let's take a quick look at part of this latest home teaser which i guess really wants us to see this movie in 3d this place it isn't what you think it's a cage. I don't care what he can do. He's not getting out. But you thought you could win. I don't have to win. We both just have to lose. So this footage shows us Kang in that time chair vessel that we saw in an official Empire photo. And Kevin Feige told Empire what is really going on with this. He said Kang's a very powerful person, but when we meet him, he's in a position where he needs to get that power back. He has a ship and a device that would allow him to go anywhere and any when he wants if he can get it online. If only he had access to genius scientists with Pym particles. Aha, so this sheds light on the deal that Kang is making with Scott. Scott uses his pin particles to steal something for Kang. I think Kang is a ship and I think he separately needs a device to power the ship. That device being a power or fuel source so that Kang can repair the ship, get it back online. And Kang, once he can once again navigate the time stream, is offering to manipulate timelines so that Scott can get the five years back with Cassie. But in this footage, notice that it looks like the ship breaks or might fail to get online, leading Kang to look particularly pissed off and use his wrist mounted beams to throw Scott down. This will make even more sense as we go back through the IMAX 4K version of the footage because there are some additional details in this trailer that are worth discussing. First, there's the photo of young Cassie on Scott's phone. Cassie has, of course, aged into a young woman now played by Emma from, uh, Catherine Newton. But the fact that Scott leaves her younger photo on his screen tells us that he's sentimental and doesn't want to update the caller photo of Daddy's little girl, or that maybe he's still on pre-blip era of iOS and hasn't yet figured out how to update the photo. But specifically, this shot of young Cassie is a screen grab from the 20. 15 Ant-Man film the exact moment that Scott gave Cassie the ugly rabbit for her birthday and shown in a flashback in this trailer. <laughs> So it could just be that the film is using this stock image as a photo in the universe, or since we know that the Kang variant He Who Remains scripted the entire Infinity Saga as part of his sacred timeline and is capable of watching it back on a film projector using these same exact shots and angles and editing as we saw it from, this could be Kang manipulating Scott with imagery from his archives with the carrot that he's gonna use to trick him into helping him. One thing not talked enough about is the music in this trailer. It is so good, and I didn't even get Elton John to do it. Who are you? I'm the man who can give you the one thing you want. So the track in this trailer is called The Navigator. It's a collaboration between Audio Machine and composer Harry Lightfoot. And of course the track title, The Navigator, super appropriate given Kang's goal to navigate his way out of the quantum realm. Organ music so intense and haunting, reminding me of Hans Zimmer's score from Interstellar, which is also a story about a father trying to save his daughter, a daughter whose life he misses out on thanks to time dilation. Then the shot of Kang's blue mask peeling back, really fun to look at frame by frame in 4K. The lights on the side of his helmet flicker off first, and then there are diagonal lines across the cheeks when the mask is still up, indicating additional reinforcement braces within the mask that keep it sturdy. There's also this new overhead shot of Kang City, and in IMAX 4K, all those circular platforms really do look like the inner gears and cogs of a wristwatch. But then this shot of the rings rising up past the pyramid structure, now in a taller aspect ratio, gives us a better look at the background. And actually, when you compare this to the similar shot in the October trailer, not only has the giant orange vortex been added to the sky, at the top of the pyramid, if you look closely, the point is no longer an illuminated yellow tip. That yellow tip reminded me of the light glowing from the tower of the Citadel at the end of time in Loki. But here, I think it is the penthouse where Kang looks out upon the quantum realm from. It may be turned off here in this IMAX trailer because they don't want it to look as artifacty, but either way, something is geographically located there in the context of the film. But hey, you know what time it is? 
Bam, it's geology time. Geology is a 16 time award-winning personalized skincare company recognized in Hypebeast, Birdie, Men's Health, Esquire, and Ask Men grooming awards with over 6,000 five-star reviews. And now they offer products for whatever you need. Just take a quick 30 second diagnostic quiz and geology figures out your routine for you. Geology creates simple and effective skincare and hair care routines customized just for you with ingredients that are proven to work no matter what you're trying to take care of. For hair care, use Geology's Co-Wash. It's a specially formulated cream cleanser that removes buildup and cleanses hair without the harsh ingredients of typical shampoo. Geology also has body washes that are free of harsh ingredients, smell great, and are refillable. For skincare, Geology can protect your skin from environmental stress with vitamin C plus E for real serum to keep your skin looking young and healthy, and then a bit of dermatologist-tested aluminum-free deodorant. Right now, for a limited time, Geology is hooking our viewers up with an absolutely insane offer. If you use the code ROCKSTAR70, they will give you an additional 70% off their award-winning skincare trial set. We did the math and that's five products for just $15. On top of that, you can take an additional 30% bonus offer on one of their brand new skin, hair, and body products of your choice when you add that to your trial. To get started, just click the link in the description. Now, of course, there's been a lot of talk about MODOK in this trailer and Corey Stoll's giant face, but the shot I'm more interested in him is the overhead shot of all of them that gives a profile that you can see his nose sticking out, giving his head a more three-dimensional quality. Now, yeah, it still looks weird, but it's not the two-dimensional George Lopez face. Really, I think this was caused by the different parts of his body shrinking at different rates. And that continued as Darren zipped down into the quantum realm until Kang was able to pause the process, leaving Darren's head weirdly large compared to the rest of his body. Remember, in the void in Loki episode 5, there was a giant yellow jacket helmet that had been pruned from another reality. So some Kangs have previously been entangled with Darren crosses. Of course, the most eye popping shot of this new trailer is Scott in what I assume is this vast Nexus hub pit with thousands of Scott variants piling upon each other like ants to reach the these huge golden bands. Writing on these bands matches the circular cuneiform that we first saw on the very first set photo for the film where the letters of Quantumania were written this way. And as Scott stands atop the other Ant-Men, he aims his wrist at these bands and the red piece on his wrist activates. But remember, red pin particles shrink, blue ones enlarge. So I think he's gonna shrink whatever this is and steal it. What is it? Well, thanks to the IMAX 4K version, you can see that beyond the bands are bright golden bolts of energy, which look a lot like the cracks in reality that we see at the end of the trailer when Kang has Scott in the headlock and various other shots that we've seen of this location, all probably part of the same scene. I think what we are looking at is the energy source that Kang needs to power his vessel, the thing that Kang needs Scott's pin particles to take or to retrieve. And then maybe Scott, once he realizes how evil Kang is, sabotages Kang's ship so that the energy source just spills out everywhere. Now, back in my first trailer breakdown, I pointed out the visual similarity between Kang's circular ring city structure and the Ten Rings. And this golden structure does look a lot like the Ten Rings in the Shang-Chi post credit scene when Wong projects their forms and a golden glow emits from the center, which in that scene was a beacon activating, summoning someone or something. Perhaps that beacon was calling to Kang, his ship's power source calling to him to find. Also, by the way, it looks like Scott has to pile on top of his variants to reach these bands, because notice how any variants that try to grow to giant size immediately unravel. This could be a security feature of the bands. Anyone too big gets disintegrated when they're too close, so it requires someone who can stay small enough using pin particles to pull off this heist. Notice how every new variant of Scott that splits off immediately extends their helmet over the face, and only the Scott that we follow keeps his helmet off. Also, a little detail I just love, the shot of MODOK with his mask armored form totally has a little green vital sign indicator on his chest. Now when Scott falls from the Tower of Ant-Man variants and gets buried in them, looks like Hope Van Dyne, Wasp, is gonna swoop in to rescue him, but if you look closely behind her, I think her inter Entering this area causes an array of variants to split off from her, too. Now, many have pointed out how Kang's blue platform looks a lot like Reed Richards' portal in Multiverse Madness. Kang is a descendant of Reed Richards, so it makes sense, but it sounds like Kang is building on the technology of many Marvel heroes, because that final shot of Kang blasting energy from his wrists seems like Kang is doing this out of rage. The earlier shot showed him looking out of the battle, and one of his ships is getting shot down by a green ship. Kang in this movie has been described as, quote, no moves wasted, but this energy blast and scream seems like a bit of wasted energy to me. But notice how Kang's scars light up blue when he does this, and the armor on his arms and his shoulders lifts upward to free up his arms. So this suggests that Kang is a kind of nanotech armor similar to the Mark 80 suit that Tony Stark had in Endgame. My theory that Kang built on Tony Stark's technology, perhaps even stole Avenger tech as trophies after killing them? Because remember, Loki concept art had an Iron Man helmet trophy in He Remains Collection. This theory is looking more and more likely, folks. And I think Kang is so mad here because he's embarrassed to have to show this to people. Hey, another reminder to subscribe to the Deep Dive channel launching February 17th so we can celebrate Quantumania Day together. Follow all of our socials there at Deep Dive NR. You can follow me 
on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.